Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph y equals cosecant of 2x. And to do that, what we like to do is graph the reciprocal function, which would be um, sine of x. And then we can apply our, um, that graph to be able to actually find determine what the graph of cosecant is going to look like. So what I'm going to simply do is I'm going to kind of forget we're dealing with cosecant of 2x right now. And I'm just going to say, let's graph y, um, y equals sine of 2x. Okay. So when we're graphing y assigning 2x, um, remember there's important characteristics that we need to do for pretty much all of them that you're going through. So the first thing we always want to be able to do is determine our amplitude, which is absolute value of a, our period, which is equal to um, 2 pi divided by b. We want to know what our x scale is, which is our period divided by 4. Um, we want to know what the horizontal shift is going to be, which is going to be um, da, 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 bx minus c. And we want to know what the vertical shift is going to be, which is d. And you might say, all right, where is you know, the bx and the d and all this kind of so forth? Well, when we look at our standard form of here's my sine function, the standard form that we have is y equals a times sine of bx minus c plus d, where a, b, c, and d are all going to transform um, our graph when we have values. And you can see the only number that we actually have a value for other than 1 is b, because that's being multiplied by our x. So a, if we look at this, I'm not, I'm not multiplying any number by 1. So my amplitude is absolute value of 1, which is just equal to 1. My period, you can see I do have a 2b, or I have a b, which is 2. So it's 2 pi divided by 2, which equals pi. My x scale is going to be my period divided by 4. So that's going to be pi divided by 4. Done. My um, horizontal shift, that's going to be how am I going to move my graph left to right. All we simply do is take whatever's inside our function, oops, I'm sorry, and set it equal to 0. So here I have 2x equal to 0, divide by 2, divide by 2, x equals 0. Um, so therefore, we're not going to be shifting it anywhere from our parent graph. And my vertical transformation is d, but d does not exist in the example, so we can just write none. OK, so when we're graphing, usually we like to provide two, um, two periods. And we can do two periods to the right, two periods to the left, or one period to the right, one period to the left. It doesn't really matter. Um, a lot of times, I like to do just a period to the right and period to the left, uh, depending on the problem. So the first thing we want to do is look at our x scale. And, and you know. These, are, um, uh, these functions continue on and on forever. There's really no start point and no end point. But the horizontal shift, if you're going to start graphing, you're going to want to you're gonna have to start somewhere. I always like to start at where my horizontal shift is, which is x equals 0. All right. The next thing I want to do is make sure I know where my amplitude is, which is going to be up 1 and down 1. Right? Your, your graph is only going to go as high um, as the amplitude and as low as the amplitude. So I plot those two points next. The next thing is I want to make sure I um, write in my x scale. So my x scale is pi over 4. Remember, the x scale tells you where all your important points are going to be as far as the maximum, the x-intercept, the minimum, x-intercept. So I'm going to start scaling this at pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4. And 4 pi over 4, which is just pi. Notice, when I do four of my x scales, that takes me to one period. That means going in the positive direction is going to give me one period. So I can go in the negative direction to get me my second period. I'll just make everything negative. So I guess that's pi halves, right? OK, so now we need to know exactly what the graph of sine looks like. Now remember, we're graphing sine, but we're only doing sine just to get to cosecant. So remember, sine intersects at the origin if the parent graph intersects at the origin and then goes up to its maximum. So by knowing what the parent graph looks like, that is what the sine function would look like at 2x. And I can follow this along in the negative direction. Next one would be my minimum, intercept, maximum, intercept. And again, the reason why I know this shape is by knowing the parent graph. And I'm not going to go through all of it. Um, because I, you, know, you can go ahead and watch the video on what is the parent graph of sine to be able to determine that. OK, so that is what sine of um, 2x equals. But again, remember, we're trying to figure out what um, cosecant of 2x is going to be. So when we're graphing the cosecant function from sine, there's a couple important points that we need to know. 
First of all, the maximum and the minimums are shared points for each function. So therefore, I am going to have a point there, 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 and there. The next thing is at each x-intercept, that is actually undefined. So for every x-intercept for cosecant, uh, or for sine, that's going to be undefined for cosecant. Because remember, reciprocals of each other. So if 1 equals 0, then you flip it, then it's going to be 0 in the denominator, which would be undefined. So I'm going to apply asymptotes at every x-intercept. Now remember, asymptotes are where the graph is going to approach. Okay. Um, so basically, we're not going to get, I don't want to get too detailed as far as the exact points, but since I told you they share these points, now they need to approach both these asymptotes, and really, they kind of take shape of a little parabola approaching each asymptote. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph the cosecant of 2x. Thanks.